Welcome to the Modology Motorsports Podcast, Season 1, Episode 1. I'm your host, Blake, and with me is... Marcus. <laughs> Hi. Marcus and I met online in a, in a Facebook group for video games. And we got talking kind of off to the side a little bit about car. I think I posted a picture of some cars and Marcus was like, got interested in it. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. <laughs> and then we got kind of talking on Messenger and it all led to modology. For all of our sins, yeah. <laughs> I think it took about like, what, three or four weeks of just constant berating each other's cars and figuring out different things with each of our cars and all the issues that we were having at the time. And I think I just came up with a, a stupid thing. I was like, oh, why don't we just do a podcast? And I think he was like, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And I was like, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, of course we could do that. We could do anything. <laughs> yeah, I listened to another car podcast a couple of weeks ago, and I, I wanted to see just what their, like their, their show flow was, like their segments and stuff like that. I won't, I won't say the name of the show, but the guys were real, I don't know, they they were talking about like the cars they get to drive, and I don't know, they just seemed real real full of themselves to be to be hosts. I mean, it's, they were just like talking about, well, I drove this Cadillac CTS, and it had all these options and whatnot, oh, but it was a piece of crap, and not compared to some of this other stuff I get to drive, and <laughs> I was like, well, you could just talk about the car, and you know, you don't have to talk about how, how great you are for getting to drive it. So, what so we're I, like, I don't want I don't want modology to be to be like that. No, so we're like modology motorsports. We drive the crap cars that so you don't have to. <laughs> That's right. We build the garbage. <laughs> build the garbage, definitely. Uh, my car's definitely looking like garbage at the moment. <laughs> well, let me let me hop into who I am, and then we'll hop into who you are, and we'll talk about the cars we've got and our driving experience and stuff like that. Mine. Like I said, I'm Blake. My driving experience isn't anything like super crazy. I, uh, when I was younger, turned 22, I got my first Honda Civic and it was at the peak time of Fast and the Furious and there were Hondas and Mitsubishis and Toyotas just everywhere. So I got, I had my little Honda Civic. It was, the it was a sedan, D, uh, LX was the first one. Nice. And, it had uh, the 1.5 liter non VTEC motor. When we got it, it was already lowered, and that was about it. And I ended up changing like everything I could change on that car. Uh, really? You went take, way deep. Way deep on a D15 non VTEC. Way deeper than I than I should have went, considering just you know the motor <laughs> that was in it, the grocery getter motor. Yeah. But I fell in love with that car and that body style. And I know there's there's a, a, a coupe and a hatchback version. There's just something about the sedan that I just I really really like, you know. Flash forward a couple of years later, now that I'm 37, uh, two years ago, a guy I worked with was he drove this burgundy Honda Civic sedan, and it mm. was older than my first one. My first one was a 95. This one was a 92, and it was a DX body. So it was the base, just bottom, featureless <laughs> body <Featureless> style. Shell. <laughs> You know, it, I think air conditioning and the radio was the biggest luxuries of that that the DX model had. So wow, you had aircon. The only car that I've ever had working aircon is my racing car downstairs, and I'm going to be stripping that out. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, it had it, but it didn't. It didn't work when I got it. So it, ah, right. Okay. It, and and as of now, it's already gone. So mm. he so I was talking to him about asking. You know, well, can you find another Civic? Do you know somebody else is selling one? And he was like, Well, do you just want to buy mine? And I said, yeah, you know, how much do you want to sell it for? And he was like, 800 bucks. So I was like, okay, all right, that'll work. So I buy the car from him. He let me drive it. And I really didn't see anything wrong with it at first. Yeah. But, but <laughs> once you get like the owner out of the car and you, you sign the title or whatever, and it's yours and you can really start playing with it. I noticed that like the very first thing I had to fix on that car was not pop the hood. It only had two motor mounts on it. Oh, two out of five. What broken and fallen off, or just just shredded? not just not there at all. Oh, it okay. had the two. It had the two that mount it up to the fender wells. That mm. one holds the transmission, one holds the engine. And when you hit the gas, the motor would just swing back and forth. Oh, that's and, nasty. Yeah, and I didn't notice it until it broke the radiator hose. It pulled like the radiator hose in half one day. That's how I figured out about the motor mounts. Crikey. 
So I fixed all those, and then it's just been a wild, a wild, wild ride after that. You know, there'll be there'll be videos up on the YouTube channel by the time you hear this. Of yeah, I want, I want to do just a feature video of you know where the Civic stands now. But it's it's come a long way. The one thing I, I will mention before I turn it over to you is where my other one had a 1.5, um, just the 1.5 non VTEC engine. This one had a D16 A6 motor mm. out of a 91 SI hatchback. So it, okay. it still wasn't VTEC, but it was a lot better motor. No, no, no. It definitely sounds a lot better on that one. Right, and it gave me a great platform to to start with. Mm. But we'll we'll talk more about the Civic later on. But that's that's my primary car right now. And as far as like race experience, I did a lot of um. Well, we went to Mexico a lot to do street racing. <laughs> oh yeah, Back during my first Civic. So my eight twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. I was doing a lot of street racing in Mexico. Mm. So I've you know seen a lot of wild cars on the street, raced a lot of cars that I knew I didn't have any chance to to beat, mm. but I had a blast and I loved just that the whole community that popped up around around that 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 scene that 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 street racing scene. Yeah, I can imagine that. It, it sounds quite fun. I mean, it's a, definitely a lot different to what I've actually dealt with in my life. But yeah, that well, sounds quite fun. I've never actually done any street racing. Well, before we get into like future plans for the cars, Marcus, tell us about a little about yourself and a little about your car. I started in 2003 um, doing autocrossing uh, with my father. Um, we built a two-liter four-wheel drive Corsa, which you guys would call an Opal Corsa. I'm assuming, if my memory serves me correctly, is Opal cars over there rather than Vauxhall. Is that correct? Right. Yes. Yeah. So um, we took a uh, two-liter Cavalier engine, uh, 16-valve red top, and uh, transplanted it into a Corsa body uh, with all the running gear from the Cavalier 4x4. So they had a system in those cars at that time where they uh, it was predominantly front-wheel drive until the ECU sensed that the rear end was losing grip, and then it would put the uh, four-wheel drive into motion. So we had a switch in the um, in the cab right next to where the um, where the ignition switch was that uh, switched it between front-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. Uh, so the original engine in that was running twin 45 Delorto Webers on it. Uh, we didn't have any um, fancy stuff on it at that point. And it's now running um, a full ignition system. Everything is all electronic. Um, 120 uh, mil inlet. And that goes into a, uh, a plenum box that we made ourselves which then goes uh, into the inlet tract, uh, which is another 120 mil. And uh, it, yeah, it is ridiculous to talk in that thing is just absolutely phenomenal. If memory serves, because I haven't dealt with the engine in that car for a good five years now, it's changed a hell of a lot now. So I think it's all forged. Everything's forged on that thing now just to stop it from blowing itself to pieces. Um, nice. And it's got a uh, short shift uh, quaif, uh five-speed gearbox in it now. Uh, whereas before, it used to have whatever gearbox we could find that was uh, a Vauxhall one that we could slap on the back of it from a junkyard. And I think, if memory serves, at one point we went through five gearboxes in two and a half months because it absolutely shredded them to pieces, just blew it all to kingdom come um <laughs> so i did i in 2003 when i first started i won uh no no i came third in the under 21s uh championship for the autocross and then second year i think i came second i sort of fell to the wayside at that point after my second year of uh 
proper racing and uh, I started getting more into my work. So racing sort of went by the wayside uh, up until recently when I've now decided that I'm going to be uh, picking up racing again. So um, to sort of commemorate my uh, my start of racing, I've bought myself a uh, 2003 Mini Cooper S R53. Uh, How European so, of you. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so 1.6 uh, supercharged. It's uh, it's not bad. I've I've only driven it about two and a half hours in total so far. So I that was pretty much its drive back home, and the next day from my house to work and back again. But it was fun. Uh, but it should be more fun. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, I haven't done any street racing. My first car was a uh, a Ford Fiesta. All right. Which, yeah, I know. I know. Uh, four gears, nine five seven cc engine in it. It was uh, boy raced up to look like a, an XR two. It uh, lasted no more than about three weeks, and I was driving back from uh, going clubbing in I think two o'clock in the morning, and it was raining out, and I was coming down a uh, back country road out of Bath. I slid sideways and the left-hand side wheels connected with the uh, raised pavement on the left-hand side going around the corner. Oh, no. And, and I smashed the uh, both left-hand side wheels 45 degrees underneath the car Ooh. and uh, wrote it off. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Um, I then got myself a... Uh, I'm trying to think what I got after that. That was... I then bought myself... Um, uh, a Nova, a 1.4 Vauxhall Nova. I was about to say Chevy Nova? No, 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 not a Chevy Nova at all. <laughs> I wish. It'd probably be better than a Vauxhall Nova, to be honest. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen what a Vauxhall Nova looks like, but I'll probably stick a picture on uh, our Facebook group at some point, and uh, everyone can laugh at me for having such a brick of a car. <laughs> Um, I had that for a few years, and um, after a while, I got bored of that and bought myself uh, an MG ZR. I think it was a 105. Um, coincidentally, MG cars at that point, uh, so it was an MG Rover, I suppose. They, they were all both the same company, so they both looked like the same car. And um, the build quality was pretty poor. But I uh, had that for a couple of years, didn't really do much with it in the end, and uh, sold it off when I needed the money, and then just went back to, I think I had a VW Polo, a little 1.4 VW Polo then. Didn't do much with that either, so I sort of got out of the tuning bug after my first car and doing uh, racing with my dad. Now it's come for me to... Uh, spread my wings and fly again it seems there you go. <laughs> i guess i guess before we mention like what we're what we've done to our project cars i guess i should go back and maybe mention my first car too mm, go for it when i was my grandfather died when i was like eight years old and i remember talking to him he had the coolest car or what i thought was the coolest car yeah and i kept asking him you know well, grandpa if you die can i have your car <laughs> <laughs> wow well, morbid i know i know <laughs> Well, lo and behold, when he passed away in his will, he had left me his, his car and it sat from the time I was eight years old. It sat for eight years without being driven. My, my grandmother would start it, back it out of the carport, hose it off and then pull it back under the carport. And so it sat for eight years until I finally got it. And it was a 1967 Chrysler Newport. Ooh. It was a 383 V8 four barrel carburetor, 727 torque flight transmission. And the car was 18 feet from chrome to chrome. Crazy. Yeah. That's a big beast. It was a long. It was wide. It was like driving a couch down the road. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I can imagine. Grandpa had got some some extras with it. It came with an AM radio and it came with seat belts. There were two of the options that he, he wanted extra on it. Wow, because he it's knew that sensible, right? He knew he was going to drive his grandkids around, so he wanted one of one with seat belts in it. He ordered it uh, gold with a black top, with the skirts on the back wheels. 
but came yep. in and it was gold on gold. And he wasn't going to take it until it had a black top. They, they kind of scrambled at the dealership to get the car sold. The only thing they had to paint the car black with on the top was is this paint called Enron, which is oh, what yeah, they yeah. paint airplanes with. Hmm. So when I got the car when I was 16, the, the paint, the gold paint had oxidized like real bad. But hmm. my God, the top was still just a shiny. <laughs> Let's just paint the whole car with this. Uh, Enron's like bulletproof, I swear. Right. Nothing there was, makes that go. There was one little chip in it, and underneath you could see where it, where it was gold at one time, and they had painted over it with the with the Enron on top. Yeah. And that was my car for, geez, years. I, well, sixteen. Well, two years at least. But by the time I drove it for two years and it got back on the road, the like all the the tires had to be replaced. You know, first thing. And then after the tires, like the radiator hoses, stuff like heater hoses, all that had to be replaced to get it like drivable. I start driving it maybe after six months, the motor mounts, the rubber was bad in those. So I had to replace the motor mounts. Mm. And then what, what finally put the nail in the coffin for that car, I never wrecked it, never really had any problems with it. It ran fine. Uh, the only problems I ever had was it had a vacuum operated diaphragm on the carburetor. Yeah. And the little flap in the vacuum had gone bad. So I had some trouble starting it, but once it was running, it was fine. Mm. But the reason I quit driving it was the, all the suspension parts started to dry rot. Oh. Finding, you know, in what, 98, finding suspension parts for a 67, a car like a big old car like that. Yeah. That, that wasn't necessarily like a popular car at the time. It was, it was getting real hard to find them. So. Mm. No, no, I can imagine that being an absolute pain. So that's when I decided I ended up parking it. Back at my grandmother's house, and then I ended up with a Pontiac Sunbird after that. I actually forgot one of my cars that I, I had for a little while, which was my uh, 2001 Mini Cooper, my original Mini Cooper. And uh, that thing, I loved it to pieces. I had it done up. I had flared arches on it, uh, thick wheels. Uh, sort of mini mini light copy thick wheels on the back so they were really really like wide and uh, adjustable suspension on it and all the rest of it one day I just I was running out of money didn't have a job at the time so I ended up having to sell it for cash oh, no. uh, yeah I wish I'd never sold it but you know it's one of those that's things kinda, that's kind of how I felt about my first Civic was at the time like I was le I was married to my first you know my first wife and I was leaving on the weekends and going to Mexico <laughs> hmm. on Saturday evenings. And she was finally like, it kind of boiled down to it was, you know, you need to get rid of that car or anything. And I was like, well, I'd rather have my marriage in this car, I guess. So I sold my car. We ended up splitting up like a year later anyway. So I should have just kept that car too. <laughs> but is it, was it better than the car that you have at the moment? Mm, well, yes. And no, no, that, this one has more done to it, but yes, because at the time it was a newer Civic, so it had it had under a hundred thousand miles on it when I got it. Yeah, and all the suspension parts were still good. You know what I mean? It just wasn't as wore out as, as this one I have now is. Yeah. Well, I guess let's talk for a minute about. Uh, tell me about the Mini. What what your plans are with it, and what you've done to it so far. My Mini, I'm going to be doing uh, hill climbing and also uh, sort of time attack sort of stuff on, on tracks. So far at the moment, I've ripped all of the interior out, which is a bad move in some cases because I'm not 100% sure which class I'm going to go in. And that denotes as to whether or not I have to keep some of the interior in or not. All right. Um, so it's easy to put it back in because depending on what you go for, I may only need to leave the carpet out, which I've already thrown in the bin and cut into small little pieces and got rid of that the other day. But I I'm, I'm still have to keep my door cards in and all the rest of it. But my mini at some point soon is going to be going on a drastic weight loss program, more so than it already has already. Um, so I will be going into the guts of the front end, rear end, and both side uh, side doors and also the rear quarter panels as well, and um, getting my uh, reciprocating saw out, hacking out the uh, side impact protection system, 
that probably weighs God knows how many pounds. Right. Yeah. It's it's going to be a ridiculous amount. But because I'm not planning on running it on the road, but it is going to be road legal technically. It's it's going to be uh, missing a lot of stuff that would probably move its end cap rating from whatever it is at the moment down to zero. <laughs> but that's, the, that's a safety rating. Yep. Yeah, so that's the that's your European end cap rating that a lot of cars now nowadays get. I'm not sure whether or not you guys hear about that in America at all. No, I'm sure we've got something else here, something of of, of equal value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. So, um, so far, what I've done apart from strip everything out is uh, getting my race seat prepped for it so i've had fun over the last uh, week or so when uh, i ordered my seat and realized that they hadn't put in all of the parts that they said were mm-hmm. there so i got them to ship over some uh, the subframe mount for my car they've unfortunately put the wrong address on it it failed and now it's going to be sent to my work address uh, which i specified uh, I think it was yesterday they rang me. So once that's all done, I'll have my racing seat in. Um, I have got uh, some proper racing suspension. So Bilstein shocks with uh, Ibac, um springs. That hasn't gone into my car at the moment. That is still in a brown cardboard box sat in the boot. <laughs> or uh, trunk, as you guys call it. Right. <laughs> And um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be hopefully going on within the next couple of months because my my dad sent me a uh, an email the other day with the uh, with a list of all of the uh, stuff on there and the first race of the year is in March and it will be at Castle Coombe which is uh, probably about a uh, half an hour to forty five minute journey from my house so if i miss that one then that would be the easiest run to get the car there right and and also um the uh one of my more favorite tracks to to race on so hopefully hopefully i'll get it all ready for then with all of my uh racing gear and all the rest of it but only time will tell because it's uh rather expensive getting all of the uh, FIA approved seats and fireproof overalls and helmets and uh, it, it it's just a nightmare to try and budget when you've got a family with two kids. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So I was just about to say, well, what 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 you going to be doing with your Honda then? Well, so far with the Civic, it you know, it came with a D sixteen A six engine, half the motor mounts, and. Uh, I had a cold air intake and a header already on it. I, I was dying to have a VTEC car. I'd never owned a VTEC car. My wife had a VTEC Accord, but I'd never had a VTEC Civic. So I was on the hunt for a, a single cam VTEC head. And lo and behold, a guy that she worked with had a white Civic. It was a S, uh, uh, SI of uh, the D16 Z6 VTEC. Mm. And his trans it was automatic though, and his transmission went out. And Honda automatics are terrible. The five speeds are bulletproof, but the automatics I've never seen one that's lasted over like two hundred thousand miles. They always seems like they always fail. His transmission went out, and he was like, "Hey, do you want to buy my car? Maybe use it for parts for yours because the body was identical." And I said, "You know, y- yeah, yeah. How much you want to sell it for?" He said, "I just want scrap price for it." He said, two hundred dollars." And I said, "All right, you got a deal." So I took him the money before he could change his mind. And called a tow truck and had the white Civic brought to the house. Uh, pulled the head off of it one weekend. And the next weekend, pulled the D16 A6 head off mine. Changed the head gasket. Pulled the old order out to the block. And bolted down. Put in new head studs. Bolted down the VTEC head. Changed the distributor. And I pulled his wiring harness out. Because it had you know, the VTEC connections in it. Yep. They have a, a P28 ECU that'll run a single cam or or a dual cam OBD1 VTEC. So I already had it, and the check engine light had been on because there wasn't a VTEC solenoid. But um, light went out. Everything ran fine. Uh, the swap did good. 
I uh, still was not impressed with how much, you know, how much difference the VTAC made. And this, with, with a twin cam, it makes a lot of noise and you can, you can really hear it and feel it. But with a single cam, the, the trans, the VTAC transition is real, real mellow. So you don't, it's a bit gutless. Yeah. So I was, I was unimpressed. I was like, man, I was expecting so much more out of that. Mm. Was it worth the 200? Yeah, it was worth the 200 because just buying a head, you, you'd spend, 200 at least for a head plus i got a wiring harness out of it so mm, it was true. Uh, extra set of wheels you know stuff like that so it was all right mm. um so i ended up selling the car to somebody that needed the bottom end and made 200 dollars back so i basically got it all for free nice so i did that and then i'd been dying to have a purple car i've always been crazy about the old dodge color plum crazy purple mm. and i started researching Plastidip online and found this website called dipyourcar.com and they sell like liquid Plastidip by the gallon and they sold a kit that came with a sprayer, compressor, everything you need to paint your car for like 200 and something dollars. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to pull the trigger and I'm going to get this and I'm just going to paint this car purple. Yeah. So we, I ordered everything and then I had all the stuff for about, about a year before I actually decided to, to break down and paint it. And I had some minor body stuff I had to fix on the car. Uh, got that done, took it to my father-in-law's, we sprayed it with a purple, and at first I was thinking, I don't know if that's going to cover this burgundy without a primer, but, like, and we used two gallons, the only things I didn't paint purple was the driver fender, which is vinyl wrapped, and the hood, which is black, and two two gallons of Plastidip put about 12 coats on the car. <laughs> so, so, like, golf balls bounce off of it now, there's so much plastic step on it <laughs> but it turned out good there's a couple spots where like where the paint meets the window and stuff where it's starting to come up just a little bit but as long as you don't pick at it it's, it's fine yeah but it, you know I, I learned a lot doing it as far as spraying it again later i'll probably end up painting it again purple in another year or two just go over it again yeah but uh it's purple i got my first set of wheels i'd never owned a car that had nice wheels a friend of mine had a set of Rota Circuit Tens he was selling. I needed tires. He cut me a good deal on the wheels and tires. Mm. I got them for five hundred bucks. I put those on. So now it's purple with bronze wheels. Uh, pulled the back seat out for because nobody really rides in the back anyway. So now I've got a sedan with no functioning back seat. And uh, oh, I got a chip for the ECU. The ECU, the P twenty eight's been chipped. And that's about it. Changed the clutch and stuff, but all that was going to happen anyway. And I mean, it's still not like the clutch I want, but it was a clutch to get me around for a while. And that was the first time I changed a clutch by myself. And that was exciting. It, everything went good until I had to try and like hold the transmission up to get the bolt started back in the, in the, how the bell housing on it. And yeah, that, that, trouble. I can imagine that being a bit of a juggling, juggling escapade. I know for a fact that when I've done transmission on the uh, Corsa, I've ended up having to use uh, a second jack just to try and get it all sort of balanced on there so I could just offer it up and then slap a bolt in the side before everything falls apart. I guess future plans for the Civic, the very first thing I'll do, which all this will be on, on the website. Number one, i got to change the VTEC solenoid gasket because it's leaking. I'm going to fully redo the suspension in the front and the rear. I told you, I think over, over Facebook Messenger that, you know, it's time to upgrade the suspension, man. This thing pops and cracks and on every bump in the road. And we got to talk and it's like, you know, a lot of this stuff is original from, I think the shocks and, and struts are original from 92. So our need that suspension wise needs to be replaced. So, mm. you, uh, lower, go ahead. I, I think I mentioned all the bushes and stuff like that that you needed to change out for, uh, Sort of decent ones now. Get yeah, rid of all the urethane bushings. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the way to go. It's going to sharpen up your your response on your steering. No end. So all the bushings will get changed. The upper and lower control arms will get changed. Uh, the shocks and struts are coming out for Raceland coilovers. I know Raceland's kind of you know a middle of the road brand, but the ones I had on my first Civic were eBay coilovers, and the spring sagged, and I kept wearing out my tires and something that's going to be a little more durable than the ones I started with. Yeah, uh, I must admit, e buying suspension parts off of eBay is generally not the greatest idea. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned. Lesson learned. Lesson learned, yeah, because eBay. 
Yeah, because of eBay. <laughs> yeah. I was, I, I was hard up. I was going to have my mind made up. I was going to throw a turbo on the D16 until I blew it up. And then I was going to buy a, a twin cam like B16. And then I talked to you and said, you know, maybe I'll just wait until I get a twin cam motor and then I'll put a turbo on it. And you said, well, that's, that's probably a better idea. I was going to kind of mention that, but you know, maybe, maybe that's what you want to do. And then I started doing some research on the twin cam motors and they need a lot of work to really be stable to handle the single cams do. I mean, it's just less moving parts. So I did some research, talked to some friends and what I finally decided to do and on the 19th of December, which is two days from now, it'll already been, hopefully by the time you hear this, I'll already have it. I talked to a buddy of mine. I'm going to pick up a D16 Z6 block. I'm going to pull everything out of it, rebuild it from the bottom up. Uh, hopefully the crank will be good. I'm going to use the stock crank. I'm going to go with forged rods and Vitara pistons and actually build a block that will handle some handle boost and be enjoyable this time. I'm going to keep my head that I've got, take it, have it broken down, kind of rebuilt, maybe ported a little bit, opened up a little bit more, and uh, keep that head and then buy a turbo kit for it. Are you going to be changing the injectors at all? Yeah, I'll go from, well, I think it's 260 stock to CCs, and I looked at like four, what, 440 CCs. It's just, I guess, depending on the turbo I end up with, it'll determine what, how big of an injector I want to go with. True, because you don't want to end up pinging. Or keeping it running, uh, working on some of the other project cars until like springtime gets here. You know, get the suspension fixed first, and then have the block. I'll have it at my father-in-law's house in his shop where, you know, it's dry and you can go in and shut the door and stay cool or stay warm. And I'm not trying to do rebuild a motor, like sitting in the yard. So, but that's, that's future plans for the civic. Yeah. I'm getting excited. <laughs> I'm going to get excited looking at that. When, when you, when you get it, I want to see pictures. <laughs> oh, you'll see them. Everybody will see them. They'll be on my motorsports.com when, when all is said and done, and plus the YouTube channel, I'll, I'll try to make sure I document everything that is going on with the Civic during all this. Yeah, I, I think I'm, what I'm going to end up doing uh, for YouTube is I'll probably do a, uh, a catch up on what I've done to the Mini so far, and I'll just do a pretty little short sort of walk around, walk around it, and what, what I've noticed and what I need to do, I expect, and then I'll, I'll run from there, and then everything else that I do to it, I should be able to. Um, uh, video and get up on the YouTube channel. Just do it. Just record as it goes, I guess. That's, that's, yeah. that's what I need to do too, is just like a walk around to start with and then just document everything from there. Yep. Yeah. I think that's probably the uh, the best way forward on that one. But speaking of YouTube, by the time you hear this, it's January and there's already some stuff live on our YouTube channel, if not if not more, but at least what we got now. Um, there's a couple of videos. Videos. I guess we'll start with the Catrum. Marcus, tell us about the Catrum video that's up there. About yeah. tell us a little about the car and, and what was going on in that video. So the Catrum is my father's car, and we've had no end of problems from start to finish on that thing. So let me give you uh, a quick history of the car so far. So my dad bought it last year. He, he he spoke to me a little bit beforehand, and he was like, Marcus, I, I want to buy myself another Catrum, and I want to get a decent one. And I was like, yep, go do it. So he ordered it. He got it delivered. He took it out for a couple of runs up and down just to see what it felt like. was pretty happy with it at that point. That evening, he parked it in the garage, and then uh, in the morning, uh, I got up in the morning to go to work. I think I got about as far as getting dressed for the morning. My dad had already left because he was going to go and uh, take his catering to his friend in Wales. He got as far as the other side of the town that I live near and uh, somebody reversed out of their driveway straight into the front of it and um, yeah, I had to go and drag him with my car back home with my dad, very, very red faced (laughs) and uh, swearing profusely. 
Uh, we parked it back into the garage and then it got hoofed back off to Caterham to get the whole front end rearranged back again. When it came back, it ran like a dog. It wouldn't idle properly. It was... Uh, it just felt awful when you were driving it up up through the rev range. It felt like it was uh, overfueling at some points and underfueling at others. And it was very obvious at that point that it didn't feel great. Apart from the fact that originally when it first came back again, it wouldn't start at all. No, no. So it, to cut a long story short, it got sent back a, a myriad of times to Caterham to get it fixed. And it finally came back and it would start, but it wouldn't run great. You know, most people at this point would send it back to Caterham. Myself and my dad being the people that we are decided that what we would do would, uh, was to take the car to my dad's friend in Wales that actually builds engines. And, uh, we stuck it on their rolling road and essentially uh throughout the video that you'll hopefully you guys see um you'll see that we tested it out found that it was indeed overfueling and underfueling at multiple points throughout the rev range when it was on its uh, proper pull was uh, decided that we would basically swap out the ECU which in general isn't a great idea on a car that isn't you know, more than two years old. Right. Uh, and um, we've had it, well, we spent, what, £900 on an ECU and about five days' worth of rolling road in, eight hours straight on it, which I'm not sure how much that's going to cost at the moment. My dad's going to get the final bin at some point, so probably in the range of two and a half grand, I expect, on on hours spent on it. Ooh. And... Um, so the Caterham is a 620R, which is, um, what they mean by that is 620 brake horsepower per tonne. So, I mean, it weighs about 525 kilograms, um, which I'm not sure what that is in pounds. After us getting it all remapped, it is now 715 brake horsepower per tonne. And uh, we haven't picked it up yet because um, we're being very conscientious about this. We've decided that we're not going to let anyone be able to copy the EC or anything like that. So we're getting the EC locked. Oh, so that, good idea. So that when we take it back to Caterham, they can't use it. They can't do anything with the, uh, the ECU apart from look at it and say, yeah, that's a nice ECU. Maybe we should have spent the money on it and actually decided to make a car that actually worked right. <laughs> but we'll, we'll leave my, my opinion on that as uh, far away and as non-biased as possible. Yeah, so yeah, we, we've made a 35 grand car and spent another two and a half, maybe three grand on it just to make it work right. So we're probably going to turn around and show off our car to the uh, guys at Caterham and then uh, tell them they can't have it and drive off into the sunset. <laughs> All right, flip them <laughs> off and take off. <laughs> Pretty much at the Look moment. At yeah. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so at some point soon, we're going to be going over and picking it up and uh, doing our test drive in it and see how it feels. And hopefully it will be uh, an absolute wonder of... Uh, racing goodness and uh, my dad will be able to uh, enjoy it a lot more than he has done apart from oh. the fact that he won his uh, hill climb uh, the, the the actual hill climb championship for uh, this year he's actually getting his award sometime in the next couple of months um, for winning it outright That's in great. that car <laughs> which isn't bad for a 70 year old man <laughs> in a car with a bad ECU. In a car with a bad ECU with an absolutely shocking map on it. Yeah. <laughs> and if you've never seen a, a Catrum, I guarantee, go look at the our YouTube channel because w when you had told me that he had a Catrum, I think you had typed it. So you had typed it in Facebook Messenger, and I was like, "What's a 
What's a caterham? What is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, caterham. You know, yeah, so, finally said caterham, and I was like, "Oh, that's how you say it." Okay. Yep. <laughs> but it's more like it's, so, like, it's, it's like a two-seater roadster, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's basically built out of aluminium and uh, well, yeah, pretty much just about aluminium and some other bits of plastic held together with duct tape and all the rest of it. And uh, they shove a roll cage in it, stick a couple of wheels on this on it, and uh, fire it out the door with a really crap ECU map. But yeah, <laughs> you, you you can't tell by now that I'm feeling a little bit uh, bitter about it, can you? <laughs> it, it, it reminds me a lot of the the Plymouth Prowler. Do you remember those? Mm, not really. No. I've probably seen one around before, but not over here. It was a it was like a roadster car that Plymouth built, and it had the the open wheels on the front, the two seater. It reminds me a lot of it. Well, I'll, I'll have to have a look. Maybe we'll have to do uh, a Plymouth Plow- Prowler versus a, a Caterham style challenge. There you go. <laughs> I think the, I think the Caterham looks a lot better. the The Prowler looked really futuristic. I mean, it still had that roadster look, but like a modern roadster look. Mm. But but since you know it came out, the Plymouth has gone under, and the the Prowler is is long gone. And since then, it was a, geez, like a late '90s car, I think. Not well, '97, '98, I think is when it came out. Yeah, a couple of years, and I don't ever see them anywhere anymore. It was rare to see one anyway, but you know now I don't see them. Maybe everyone drove them into hedges and stuff. Well, I mean, underneath it all, it was still a Dodge, so you know, <laughs> uh, you, you know. It's like the Viper. This is a nice sports car, but it's still a Chrysler underneath it all. Do they still catch fire? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think the exhaust set the bodywork alight, don't they? Oh, dear. The topic of the YouTube channel. We got, we're going to have the YouTube set up in a different category. So we'll have our main cars, the, the Civic and the Mini, and some of our other project cars is like our main feature videos, a fix-it section. And the videos that'll go in it are mostly videos that I hope that if I'm working on a car, just maybe my, mine or my wife's or a friend's, if we're replacing something on it, just, just general like backyard maintenance, I'm hoping that if somebody else is having the same problem, they can watch the video and maybe it'll give them, it'll help them out. So in the, the first video in the repair section, my wife and I, my wife has a DX3 2001 Ford Focus downtown a couple weeks ago and the radiator exploded i just split down the side lost all the antifreeze in the middle of you know the boulevard and luckily we were able to pull in right at an auto zone and like an idiot i go in and buy more antifreeze and i was like i don't know what happened let me just pour more antifreeze in it and then poured a whole another gallon of 14 dollars antifreeze out in the parking lot and i said like, oh, oh, oh the radiator's busted oh that's no good <laughs> have yeah, the car towed home helps to have enough you know Generally helps to have not a massive hole in it to uh, right. keep it all in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it was split enough you could see inside the radiator, but I didn't I didn't know how bad it was until I got it got it out. Yeah. So there's a there's a video on in the repair section of me changing the radiator. It's check you know check that out if you have time or hopefully if somebody's got to replace one and they're standing there looking at it scratching their head then maybe it'll maybe it'll, it'll get them get them going in the right direction. And then the only other video up right now, which, like I say, as the time this is, this goes up, there may be more stuff up on the YouTube channel. But right now is me saying goodbye to the trash truck. Uh, the trash truck was an 89 Chevy S10 with a 2.4 liter Iron Duke engine, five speed, no air conditioning, base model. I wanted it to haul stuff off with, go get, you know, tires and car parts and stuff like that. I bought the car from my father-in-law. I drove it for about six months. The fuel pump went bad. I changed the fuel pump. It ran good for about another month, and then it just would never start again after that. And I got tired of messing with it, so I filled the backup. So you spent more time getting parts for the trash truck, fix it, than you were actually going out with the trash truck to pick up parts for your other cars. Exactly. Yeah, it was. You know, I changed. Like I said, the fuel pump. It started with that, and then it was distributor, throttle positioning sensor, EGR valve. I, changed everything i could think to change that may be causing the problem and and by, i don't think i've mentioned to you um my father-in-law i ended up having it hauled off to my father-in-law he wanted it back so it got me out from what i owed him on it anyway so i was like yeah okay here's your non-running truck back thanks so he, uh, <laughs> he got it back and when i changed the fuel pump the 
to get to the tank in that truck, you would have had to take the bolts out and take the bed off. Well, for, for being an 89, they were so rusted, those bolts weren't coming out. Well, my father-in-law said, if you don't care, I'm just going to cut a hole in the bed to get to the fuel pump. And he said, you know, it's fine with me. I don't, I don't care what you do. So I cut a hole in the bed, took the fuel pump out, changed it, put a new one in. And then he, when he got it last week, a week before last, he finally called me yesterday and told me he took the fuel pump out again to check it. And the entire fuel tank is full of water. <laughs> hey. I cut in the bed. So that, that may have been the problem. <laughs> yeah. The first couple of times I started it, it would run, but it wouldn't run great. And then it finally got to just where it wouldn't run at all. So I guess it was getting a water fuel mix at first. And then it just finally was getting so much water that it, that was it. But the one thing I never considered was I already changed the fuel pump. So I know it's not the fuel pump. So I never took it, you know, took it back out and looked in the tank. <laughs> so, but it's gone. Thank God. I missed it. I wanted a truck, but now I don't want a truck anymore. I told him, just get it running and let me borrow it sometimes. That's I own another truck that I have to mess with all the time. Instead, now you've got yourself an accord, haven't you? Exactly. In future, future episodes, well, it, the wife got her an accord. <laughs> you um, got the wife an accord. Not the accord she was hoping for, though. Yeah, that was whew, that was a fun day. Uh, the, as a matter of fact, the tow truck driver that came and got the Focus uh, at AutoZone that day and took it home, he was talking to me. He said, it, and he had, he had picked me up a couple times in the Civic. The Civic's no stranger to uh, leaving me on the side of the road sometimes. But he um, he said, well, I still have that Accord if you want it. And I said, yeah. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, how much do you want for it? And first he told me like 800 or something like that. And he told me, he said, $400. And I said, really? And he said, yeah. He goes, I said, was it automatic five speed? And he said, it was a five speed, but they converted it to automatic. And I was like, well, that's kind of dumb, but okay, well, I'll get it for my wife. You know, she, she had an accord at one time. We'll get her another one. We'll, we'll play with it some. So give him 400 bucks. He drops the car off. As he's letting it off the rollback, he says, would I tell you it was an automatic? And I said, yeah, yeah. He goes, I, I meant it was an automatic and they made it a five speed. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. Because my wife can't drive a five speed. So, okay. So he drops it off. He leaves. And I go in. I told my wife, I said, so your car's out there. And she said, yeah, yeah. And she was all excited, ready to go look at it. And I said, so there's one little thing. It's, it's a five speed. And she said, what? <clears throat> and I said, yeah, it's a five speed. And she pitched a fit. She goes, well, congratulations. You got you another car. And I was like, no, 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 no it's yours. It's yours. So after, after a while, I finally got her calmed down. She got to sit in it and stuff like that. And I told her, I said, look, out of all your sisters, you'll be the only one that can drive a five speed. And you can see it in her eyes. You can see, you can see that brain going. She's like, yeah, yeah, I'll be able to do something my sisters can't do. So I think, I think she's <laughs> now she's you, okay bro. with it. <laughs> yeah. I get her, you know, you show your sisters up. So, you know. <laughs> So it worked and she's excited. So now she's, as we build the folk or build the accord in future videos, um, it's going to be her project. You know, I told her I'd help her get the parts and put them on, but she's going to pick everything out because this will be her mm. car. So then we'll have the focus that we'll share. Uh, when one of them is tore up, which, you know, it's bound to happen. We'll have the focus still we can share. And then we'll both have, uh, both have Hondas, both have little project cars after that. Maybe we should have your wife on the show at some point talking about her car. Yeah, she'll definitely be in the videos because I'm, you know, like I said, any body, she wants a body kit and all that stuff. So I told her, I said, well, you pick it out and I'll put it on. I'll have her in some of them. I'd like to get her out there when I do some of the engine work and get her to help me. That way she can get her hands dirty. Mm. But that's everything that's on the YouTube channel as of, as of the time we're recording this. But as the, when this episode goes live, there's no telling what all will be up. So it's, just look for uh, Modology Motorsports on YouTube and go ahead and subscribe to it because you'll get to see all the rest of the Project Civic and Project Mini and Project Accord projects. Any, any How many more other times do you say project? <laughs> right, I know. <laughs> In one sentence. <laughs> yeah. This podcast isn't going to be all just us talking about our cars. You know, I, you know, I, we'll talk about them all day. Me and, me and Marcus don't have any problems with talking about our cars all day, but we, we'll have more segments on the next episode. We're going to have segments such as tuning Q and a, if you got a problem with your car, you can't really figure out, or maybe you want a second opinion. You can write in and, and bump our heads together and 
out or at least give you some some advice on maybe what what we think you you should do or, or should try. Yeah, just um, send us also, uh, an email. Yeah, uh, send an email in to Modology Motorsports, one word, M O D O L O G Y Motorsports at gmail dot com. We also want to hear and see what you've been working on. Now, I love I love cars. I love the fact that anybody spends time to work on their car to improve it to to make it something for them. That's that's I, that's great. I love to see it, and I love to hear about it. So, if you have a car that you're working on your, your personal project car, just send in some audio to Modology Motorsports at gmail dot com, or send in a couple pictures of it with a description of what you've done, and we'll uh, we'll feature it on the on the website. We'll talk about it on the on the podcast. But um, basically, we're also going to be uh, keeping our ears to the ground and new mods on the market that are going to be coming out. We'll we'll discuss them and see whether or not uh, going to be worth it to be overpriced. They're going to be, I expect. Also, other things you never know. They might actually be applicable to uh, what we're going to be doing with our cars, and we might end up sort of adding them on at some point. <laughs> Hey, it's Blake. I just wanted to pop in here and say from this point forward, the audio gets a little screwy. Um, We've learned a lot since recording this episode as far as what we need to do to fix this problem. But for the rest of the episode, Marcus cuts out a little. So uh, I decided to leave the majority of it in because it's a lot of good information, especially like our social links. But we'll fix this in the next episode. Thanks. You know, we're kind of lucky. I got a friend who's who helps with uh, the ASA podcasting sometimes that goes to SEMA in Las Vegas every year to the auto show. So maybe he can uh, record some video for us while he's out there. That'd be great. We'd, we could have some uh, boots on the ground SEMA footage. That's right. Well, he, he sent me some pictures this, this year when he went. So, you know, I'll tell him just keep his eye out. Anything cool he sees, turn the, turn the camera on on his phone and, and record it for us. We'll also have a segment. We'll have a feature mod or a feature car each episode. I guess the feature this week was kind of on this episode. I mean, was kind of kind of our vehicles to get to get them out there and get let you know what what we're working with. But in the future, we'll focus on either a mod, maybe air intakes or turbos or exhaust headers or or maybe just a car that we both we both enjoy. Mm, that's uh, the. Catrum or my uh, dad's Corsa will probably feature at some point pieces on those and how they're getting on because uh, the racing uh, scene at the moment with uh, with both of those doing autocross as well as hill climbs and uh, sprints and stuff like that as well. So hoping to get a load of race footage online, uh, especially hopefully when uh, my mini becomes. Uh, and it's not got its ECU and sort of lay for the floor downstairs. Right. <laughs> and how that goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's piecing it all back together and then remembering where you left it all. I just don't put it back. I'm like, I didn't need this to start with. I didn't need this ECU. He needs an ECU in their car, hey? Yeah. I don't need these front and rear crash supports. That's like 50 pounds. I don't need those. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm cutting mine out. It's fine. <laughs> exactly, and then the last segment we'll have is is racing and manufacturing news. But you know, pretty much what's going on in the racing world, and uh, if there's any cool cars coming out the assembly line, or new models, or uh, concept cars, in between episodes, we'll be talking about those as well. Yeah, so we'll probably have a little look and see what sort of things catch our eye about them, whether it's design of how they look, or whether or not there's uh, you know new engines coming out, or its features and anything like that we'll just sit down and we'll so you're on the cool side of the planet for for racing you've got gt racing you've got le mans over there and we get nascar in the united states and like monster truck races i don't mind monster truck races they have their place it's amusing to watch them smash things up but i i don't really the whole point of going around in circles continuously right yeah my 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 father-in-law loves it but i i can't i just can't I watch some indie races sometimes, but I can't watch NASCAR. There's nothing wrong with it if you enjoy it, but it's just it's just not for me. For me, just watch them go around left and right, or in your case, just around in is it clockwise or anti-clockwise. 
I think it was. It's all left turns, and then so it was it yeah. counterclockwise. Just and yeah, anti clockwise. Yeah. Well, they they do run like one race as a road course, and that's the only about the only one I'll watch. But that's that's it. So they go straight in really really quickly, and then as soon as they hit a corner, and they can do it if it's a right hand side turn, they struggle. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, Marcus, are you about ready to wrap it up for this this first episode? Coming close to the end of the show, if we uh, start reeling off all of our social media stuff. Oh, yeah. If you want to get a hold of the show to get your your car submissions in or your, your Q&As, you can send us an email to modologymotorsports at gmail.com, M-O-D-O-L-O-G-Y, motorsports at gmail.com. I've been practicing that. Can you tell? Yep, definitely. Make a song out of it. <laughs> So catch us on Twitter at Modology Motorsports. Not Motorsports. Oh, sorry, Motors. Sorry. Yeah, just Modology Motor. It wouldn't fit, so I had to just make it Modology yeah. Motors. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm getting used to this now. <laughs> we also have a Facebook group as well. Facebook forward slash what they do now. Was it slash and then group slash Modology Motorsports probably. We'll find out. Yeah. Just search for Modology Motorsports. It'll pop up. Yeah. I don't think there's anything else that's called anything close to that at the moment. And then you got the website, mm-hmm. modologymotorsports.com. Indeed. Which, I'm looking forward to seeing this when it pops up. Yeah, as of right now, I'm still working on the website. It's still, you know, pull back the curtain. It's still December right now. And I'm going to have the website up by January 1st. But as of right now, Marcus still hasn't seen the website yet. So got a lot riding on this. Got to get everything right. <laughs> the feature cars, if you send your cars in, they'll be on there. We'll have our cars on there. The links to the podcast will be on there. The YouTube channel. All that will be on uh, modologymotorsports.com. Brilliant. And uh, I expect we'll be able to catch us on our personal Twitters as well. Mine is at Brunt. That's B-I-U-N-T. Yes. M A R C U S. Mine's at Hesser414. H E S S E R 414. Guys, have any personal questions for us? Just give us a shout. Failing that, just catch us on our Twitter. Yeah, absolutely. Motors. And uh, we'll either speak to you there or we'll uh, a podcast and you never know, might make you a feature on it. That's right. And a lot of the stuff we talk about on the podcast will be featured on the YouTube channel. So go ahead and go ahead and uh, like and subscribe on there or just subscribe or whatever. There's so many likes and subscribes and stars and whatever it is. At least subscribe on YouTube. That way you don't miss anything. Yep. And don't forget to uh, like us on whatever you're listening to us on. So then like us on iTunes. It really does help make sure that because the more people that like us, the better we're going to make the show. That's right. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. Wow. The holy yeah. trifecta. That's right. <laughs> the big three. <laughs> well, all right, Marcus. I think it's been a good one, man. A good first episode. So we'll be rolling these episodes out one a month. That's right. That'll be, what, 12 episodes a year? 12 a season. Or 12 a season, yeah. So we'll be uh, out through the YouTube. Once again, you'll just catch us once a month on here, and we'll do sort of roundup, I suppose, of everything that's happening. Well, All Blake, right. I think that's probably it. <laughs> yeah, let's get out of here, man. For for Modology Motorsports and for me, Blake, and for Marcus, we are out of here, and we'll see you next month. See ya. Bye bye. Yeah.